Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to Victoria 3 on Lord Formant. And today we're going to be talking about Portugal. Unlike EU4 and some other of the Paradox games, Portugal is definitely not easy mode. If anything, Portugal is one of the hardest nations you could start with that is still a very powerful nation in Europe. So let's go over the starting situation for Portugal and stuff. But before I do that, like, comment, subscribe, everything else, and use the timestamps that I will put below. So at the beginning of the game, Portugal is in a rather unique place. Portugal has a defensive pact and a trade agreement with Great Britain. And one of the things you ideally want to do early on is to join their custom union. Normally, I don't advocate joining custom unions. Um, because it kind of puts you under the control of the other nation. In this case, you want to join the Custom Union. The reason is, the Custom Union of Great Britain will give you access to many resources and tools, more importantly, tools and iron, that you do not currently have in your nation. And over time, you should get strong enough that then you can leave. But at the beginning of the game, joining is a pretty decent plan. If you don't join it, your economy and your start will be that much harder. Now, outside of that, Portugal starts with a neighbor of Spain that's in a just decent relationship with you. I recommend improving relations with them and keeping them improved for as much of the game as you can. Mainly because if there's a war, Spain will easily crush you as Portugal. And in my experience, Great Britain doesn't arrive soon enough to save you. You can't really fight Spain as Portugal. That's just the reality. Later on, you might have a chance, but early on, you can't. The other things to note is Portugal has a very small population compared to some of the other European powers. You're not going to be able to make tons and tons of internal growth from your Portuguese lands on their own. Um, they're not particularly populous. And also, there's not a lot of unemployed peasants that you can turn into population like you might be able to in some of the areas like France and stuff you're going to have to think a little bit more outside of Iberia. And that is a little bit tricky. So outside of Iberia, though, Portugal does have other lands. Portugal has a couple little islands around the map. So that's always nice. But the big stuff you have is unusually for, I think, every nation in the game. You actually, actually, actually have colonies in Africa that are colonizing at the start of the game. Now, you've got one up here. Uh, Portuguese Gambia, you've got Angola, you've got Mozambique. These are good colonies. I'm not going to say they're bad, but be aware they are going to take forever to expand. <laughs> forever. Let's just be honest. That's going to take... Don't even think about it that way. This means one of the first things you need to do is get malaria prevention as a tech. So... That will involve going to society, going down, and pretty much beelining straight to quinine. I have not found a much better start for Portugal other than getting that going. However, I do want to point this out. You can justifiably, if you want to, cancel the expansion up here in Kabu. There's not much resources or big benefit for colonizing this area in particular compared to the wealth of land out here. Which means, if you want to... And it's really up to you. You can cancelize the colony, give up that land, and that will speed up your colonizing out here a little bit. Now, on the other hand, you did just give up land and resources, but it really wasn't that beneficial to you. Now, you don't want to cancel these two because they're way bigger. In fact, you may want to, in fact, start a colony up here in Kenya. Reason being, if you can colonize this coast... No European is going to get access to this before you do. And that is a lot of land, a lot of population, and more importantly, a lot of resources that is there, that is yours. Once you work your way through malaria, definitely grab Cameroon and everything else. Outside of that in the world, there's really nowhere else you want to colonize. You don't really have any great claims or anything that will allow you free reign throughout all of these areas out here. The Dutch East Indies controls there. Australia is now controlled. Oceania is controlled. You can't even colonize down there. Africa is yours. The sad fact is you don't have a large population, so it's going to take quite a while for you to colonize. Now, on the other hand, 
You start with colonial exploitation. Portugal is probably one of the few nations in the game that actually may want to switch towards colonial resettlement at some point. Uh, obviously, you have to get people to support it, which is less easier said than done, but the additional migration attraction can get you more population in those states, which you may want rather than just reduce wages, substance, and decay. Up to you. Another thing to do is Portugal at the beginning is probably, only if you want to though, could be to improve your colonial affairs institution. Now, it's not going to speed up your colonization much. It's going to it's gonna kind of kind of double it, but malaria is still going to be crippling you. So you don't need to do that change until you get malaria prevention or quinine to start to reduce basic malaria. Severe malaria is going to take longer to deal with. Unfortunately, that's the reality. However, another thing about the Portuguese starting situation that you need to take into account is incorporating states. Portugal's homelands are poor, don't have a large amount of population, and by and large are not where you're going to be able to build a large Portuguese empire. Sad to say. Unless you can improve the quality of life there so much that you steal all the population from the rest of the British Empire, which I did in one of my games as Portugal. It was quite fun, but it was difficult to pull off. However, you do have other land down here. You have like areas like Mozambique and other areas which have a large amount of population. And at the start of the game, you can, in fact, begin integrating them. However, it's going to take quite a while to integrate, and it takes a lot of bureaucracy. If we were to incorporate Mozambique from the get-go, not change our institution, we would be out of bureaucracy. Now, we could start incorporating North Angola, or we could start doing... I'm not going to even attempt how to say that. If you're going to pick one to incorporate, start with North Angola, mainly because it's the only one you can really afford. However, you will not have the ability to um, uh, change your institution. Another thing to be aware of is your lands down here in Africa are going to be where you get a fair amount of unique resources that you're going to want to sell to the rest of the world. You're going to want to sell dye to people, bananas, coffee, tobacco, cotton, all this good stuff. To a large degree, Portugal can be a very trading heavy nation, but you have to have a basic sustainable economy. And by joining the British um, sphere of trading, you're in a much better place and you have access to that wider market and they will buy it from you, which is great because otherwise you have to worry about export routes and with low bureaucracy, it's very difficult to do otherwise. In my experience, people like Spain here don't want you as part of it. Portugal doesn't really, or sorry, France doesn't really want you to join them. I really wish there was some better ways to do it, but to be fair, the British trade union is much larger than anywhere else in the world. Now that we've covered the whole starting situation, let's talk a little bit about the industry. So if we are to look at Portugal itself, you will note Portugal has no modifiers in their homelands, unfortunately. They also have no buildings really in their homelands, and they don't have a lot of arable land. This makes making Portugal as Portugal itself, um, rather than its colonies, rich very difficult so if you are to look through and actually add up what you have in buildings you have textiles governments glass shipyards and that's it you don't have oh sorry you have fishing wharves and you have a logging camp along with the agrarian agriculture stuff which we're going to kind of ignore to some degree so you don't have much in terms of resources in your starting area you don't have, most importantly, a tooling workshop. This is why joining the Customs Union with Great Britain helps a ton, because otherwise you have to try and build that on your own. So as Portugal, you start off with wooden buildings. If you switch without joining the British one to iron frame buildings, you're going to have some severe problems because you can't, you don't have tools and you don't have iron. Portugal can get both of them, but you don't have them at the start. 
Swapping the iron frame buildings is usually a smart move. It will basically double your construction. I also somewhat recommend throwing down a single construction sector in Lisbon itself, just so you get more production. If you choose not to join the British one, stay on wooden frame and build a couple constructions in Lisbon and you'll, you'll kind of equal it out, but you won't get the massive growth you do if you join the British custom meet. Now, once you're done doing your construction sector, you want to start an iron mine down in here in Evora or Alentejo or whatever. Um, and then you probably want to start either in your capital or up here in uh, Dorera, start a tooling workshop. Now, this is less of a necessity if you're in the British one, but you still want some inevitably when you leave the British sphere which you will want to do in the end. So getting a tooling workshop going is the way to go. Now, the next thing you need to just even satisfy your starting input problems is you're going to need to get to an arms industry. Toss it up in one of your provinces. Ideally, look through, check your population, how much is unemployed, where's your population. You'll quickly find that your best is either your capital or more importantly, Barrera up here. So throw down any factories you're not sure where to throw up. Throw them in up there because you actually have the population. Now, until you incorporate your lands down here, you don't really want to build much industry down there because you won't get the full benefits of it because you won't get all the taxes and everything else. You could start building it up there, but for focus on Portugal itself at the beginning of the game. And once you've gotten that set up and working those three, you can start on other stuff. Now, if you've joined the British sphere, these are not your priority. Yes, the construction sector is. The priority if you're in the British sphere is to gain income. You will be going broke pretty quickly as Portugal unless you do it otherwise. So what you want to do is you want to look at your various agriculture buildings. I'm including logging camps here. And you're going to want to start to build them. So when I look this over early on, Bananas are going to be where the money is at the start, followed usually by cotton and then tobacco. So it can be worth just throwing down a single one in each of your zones. The reason, of course, you do a single one first is then when you go to the actual buildings, you can turn on auto upgrade in case you don't want to manage all the economy yourself. And the reality is it just makes things nice and neat. In terms of your production methods, you're going to want to throw down and change those. I recommend citrus so you get some more fruit and sugar, which otherwise sugar is a thing. Definitely put on tools on your buildings here. Da, da, da. Get tools for your um, stockyards if you can. Logging, upgrade all this. Since you're part of the British fear at this point in my game, you're going to want to basically put on the best production methods because you can buy it from someone. The only exception might be textile mills for silk. British, The British sphere does not usually have the greatest amount of silk at the start of the game, um, mainly because they have to build it. So that might be the only one you don't change at the start, but definitely glass works. You can even justifiably start working on the urban center, reforming that and working on glass. Gas streetlights, I'd give that a couple years before you change over just because Coal hasn't been fully integrated into the British Empire yet. You can't you struggle with all these production methods if you don't join the British sphere. I will point that out. So um, your port here, you can also upgrade this as well because you'll gain access to that. And basically that is the setup for your industry. In terms of your laws, now we already talked a little bit about changing colonial exploitation to resettlement if you can. Let's talk about the rest of the Portuguese government. Portugal, at this point in history, had just suffered through a civil war, and it kind of shows. Your government is relatively unstable. You start with landholders and intelligentsia in it, and you are suppressing the Catholic Church. Now, it's kind of my personal preference here, but I stop suppressing the Catholic Church because most of your population is Catholic. Well, actually, you have a lot of fetish fetishist people in your lands, animist, you know, Africans, but you do not have, um, they're not rich. They don't have a lot of political power. Whereas the Catholics in your land, 
do have a lot of political power, so why keep offending them? Now, once you've done that, if you want to, you can reform your government to take them into account and become way more stable. However, if you do that, you will gain you will lose access to your intelligentsia's reforms. And since Portugal you do want to do some reforms, um, it might be worth taking these guys and either bolstering them or just trying to keep them in your government at all costs. You can improve your legitimacy a little bit. Um, it's really up to you if you want to do it. If you're going to make a change, make it immediately before radicals and loyalists come into play. Now, now that we've got that slightly better set up, let's look at the rest of their laws. They have a monarchy, which is fine. Uh, you can go the whole game staying, game staying in the monarchy, or you can move away from it. Portugal starts being able to move away from it if you want immediately. Be aware that passing these laws early on is extremely difficult, but you could do it. You start with an oligarchy, which is kind of unusual. Um, it's more of a later game government reform thing. It's slightly more stable than the Aris aristocracy here, the autocracy government autocracy, but um, it still allows your aristocrats and capitalists to be stronger. All told, I think it's a better government than your, an autocracy one. On the other hand, with an autocracy, you don't have to deal with as many political stuff. So, kind of up to you. I'd stick with this, though, or switch immediately to landed voting. If you want to get all the reforms and let your country go completely nuts with democracy... Start by immediately switching to landed voting. It usually passes on the first time or two. Or you could sw swap back and go back to an autocracy in terms of your monarchy. Or you could stick with oligarchy. Oligarchy is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Outside of that, national supremacy here. Yes, Portuguese are superior. No one else is. Changing this is very difficult early on. But if you've got a choice to make, you can either go Portuguese Catholic or... Or you can go Portuguese multicultural non-Catholic. Now, the Portuguese multicultural non-Catholic will allow you to integrate your African colonies way more efficiently with less trouble. And is arguably the better way of going about it. The downside is you won't be as stable at the early part of the game. But you'll be richer and more stable towards the end of the game. So, pick one. Don't kind of hover in between them. This is a game where the extremes matter way more than the middle usually. If you're going to do that, wait a little while. Um, in my experience, within the first year or two, you get a political movement wanting to pass racial segregation or even cultural exclusion. Now, you have freedom of conscience early on, conscience early on and you've got to make a choice here. Either go state religion or total separation. There's very little reason to stay freedom of conscience. Most of your country is Portugal. It will keep you more stable. On the other hand, total separation will, once you get the tech empiricism, which you don't have, um, will allow all your African lands to be happier with you. Um, and it's definitely needed if you want to go multicultural. Thankfully, you have appointed bureaucrats, meaning your landholders are weaker. You also have a professional army, so you don't have to worry about that. You could, if you want to, swap towards national militia, but honestly... Professional army is the way to go because you will be fighting uprisings in Africa periodically. Home affairs, you don't have the bureaucracy to swap to this, but once you do, it's worth doing because it will help with um, preventing radicalism in your um, movements, which can be slightly of a problem for Portugal. Plus, it slows down revolution successions, which, considering you're going to be mainly expanding on one continent outside of your homeland, is a little bit more important than you would imagine. Interventionism is pretty good. I mean, it's a reformed. You could, if you want to, swap from interventionism to agrarianism. You get more investment pool stuff from your aristocrats and farmers, so you'll have more money to invest with. On the other hand, interventionism, you can subsidize your buildings a little bit more. So, it's up to you. Agrarianism, I think, would be my personal preference to swap to. Um, definitely don't go back to traditionalism unless you're going to play a conservative Portugal, which, let me tell you, it's not the way to go. Um, and, of course, this gets you further down here. In the long run, 
Portugal does not really do well with either command economy or cooperative ownership. Laissez-faire, on the other hand, is half decent because if you're part of the British sphere, um, it will just accelerate your growth of your economy as your pops invest their money again. And being a small country, the additional contribution to your investment pool can be really handy. That's why agrarianism, I think, would be superior if you had to pick one. Uh, Land-based taxation, you want to swap this to per capita if you need the money. This alone will solve your shortfall. On the other hand, it will keep your poor poor for a while. Proportional taxation is better, but it, you can't pass it early on. Land-based is okay. You're much better off swapping the per capita, though, early on. Uh, if you don't want to do the other reforms I mentioned, this is definitely one of the first ones you want to do then, because the increase in cash is huge for a country that doesn't have much income, it almost doubles your income. But it adds more than 50% to your income, which is really nice. Uh, if you're not going to do the money reform or any of these other ones on the left, you do want to change your policing reform from local police force to dedicated as soon as possible. Local police force, pretty much the only benefit is make your landholders stronger. Um, slightly less turmoil, but really dedicated police force way 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 better um stopping radicals from standard of living decrease is huge especially in africa outside of that religious schools is fine it converts gives access if you're gonna go and stick with a portuguese multi-faith multicultural empire you need to stick on this if you're gonna get rid of state religion or and you're gonna go completely non-religious go private schools when you can It'll balance things out. Public schools are great, but you don't have the bureaucracy early on. Charity hospitals, just leave it as is. Yes, it makes the Catholic Church stronger, but it also helps with mortality, which is a good thing for a small country with a population. The more population you get, the stronger you will be. On this side, everything is pretty much good. Uh, don't put on Social Security earlier. Don't do any of this slavery stuff. You don't need to worry about it at all. Um... You're pretty well all set. This can be ignored for a long time until you get towards the mid to late game, at which point you probably will have to restrict child labor. You'll have to give the women more rights just to keep your country stable. Um, early on, though, you don't want to change from legal guardianship because of this bonus birth rate for the women. And as a small population, you need the population. Um, but this does point out the fact that it is justifiable to definitely try and get more health care system so you get more um uh, less mortality more population growth but it's going to be a while till you can afford that bureaucracy is a real problem for portugal if you aren't aware of that already now in terms of tech we've already talked a little bit about how quinine here to clear out malaria so you can actually colonize africa is key remember once you research it you usually have to let a say auto save pass and then reload your game. Or if you're not playing an Iron Man save, then reload it to remove malaria from your states. Otherwise, they still haven't fixed that bug from what I can tell. It still is going to apply forever and it will slow down your growth. Once you're done with that, which is going to be like seven or more years. So all told about 15 years in game will pass. You've got to start thinking of where else to go. Portugal is so poor at the beginning of the game, you probably aren't going to have too many universities, meaning your tech spread is going to be low. If you've managed to resurrect your economy and make it more profitable, you could start building more universities to make more money. Don't worry about getting too much paper. Just buy it from the British if you're in the sphere. Otherwise, you got to build some paper mills and everything. Portugal is really best off as part of the British sphere or the Spanish sphere, but the British is so much bigger, you know? Outside of that, you're probably going to want to snag some stuff like stock exchange banking. In terms of important text, central archives here for the increased swap to filing system, adding bureaucracy is pretty huge for a nation that really only has 400. Uh, it almost doubles it alone. Be aware it just costs more paper, but if you're part of the British sphere, less of an issue. Outside of that, everything else you want to do is production. You'll probably get lathe by the time you get quinine. You might even get some of the others. Definitely get agriculture, atmospheric engines, stuff like that. Progress down. Railways is an important one if you're expanding into Africa for the increased infrastructure, because it's not particularly high infrastructure. Um, 
Just remember to build ports in your colonies if you haven't already done so, so you get good market access. In terms of military, Portugal really shouldn't fight anybody um, for most of the game. You'll fight some native uprisings in Africa. Your starting troops are, by and large, more than enough to deal with that. Just send eight. You, you should be able to beat almost every native uprising. If you come into contact with Europeans, your really only hope is that Britain saves you or you've got an alliance with Spain or France or something and they win the war. Your population in Portugal proper can't help you fight anybody. Um, the only nation you could justifiably conquer early game might be Spain itself, just because it's right next to you. But you don't have the money and you don't have the troops, so it's very hard. If you can pull it off, though, great. It will give you access to a much larger pool once you integrate it in 15 to 20 years pass. So debatable, but it'll be next to your homeland. Outside of that, you could do some conquests in Africa. The Congo is very vulnerable to conquest that you border. You could fight a war with Oman if you want to, to pick up their colonies. Down here, Zulu type areas, probably not worrying, go worth going after. This Madagascar, the Marina, the Marina Kingdom down here, is vulnerable to an early attack because you have better tech, but they have a large battalion number compared to you, so you would have to build up your industry and then your military first. Otherwise, conquering up here is the way to go. If you want to, you could try it. Be aware that Sokoto is really strong, and other ones like Liberia and stuff tend to either join other spheres of influence or be protected. So conquering as Portugal is really risky you're better off colonizing um and we've already talked about the colonizing central africa is yours if you get malaria and you build up quickly so i'm pretty sure that's most everything you don't want to mess around in the americas you don't want to mess around in asia africa or europe is really all you do is portugal so just to show you the economic changes, I'm going to process the time forward a little bit so you can see the impact on our economy, which is at 3.8 million for joining the British sphere. Okay, so less than a month has passed and we're at 4.5. Now, our weekly GDP is obviously down, but our actual GDP itself is up and it's only going to get more drastic. So this is the point at which I wanted to show people. Yes, our economy is improving, and our standard of living is doing well and we're getting more construction but we are losing money there is a hump here this is where you probably should consider getting rid of your consumption tax on coffee which for some reason you start with it's almost entirely useless and throwing on consumption tax on like clothes or even services just to make yourself more stable also early on you probably want to throw down road maintenance in wherever you're building your buildings, which is probably up here at the beginning, just to get that additional construction speed when you're low construction and any additional speed is gonna make quite a difference. Okay, here we go. So if you look at the nation here, we are losing money. So this is going to happen as Portugal. That's unfortunately reality. I failed to pass um, per capita taxation um, with the law, it just, I got multiple negative events. At this point, the way to recover here would be to slightly reform our government, if we can, stabilize, and this is where it is important, you can pause construction. Pausing construction may be what you have to do at the time. However, be aware that it does not stop the fact that you may still be losing money. It's not because you were getting an investment pool transfer. Canceling your construction will save you temporarily, but not all the time. In this case, pausing it is not helping me. I am going to have to fall into debt to get out of debt, if that makes sense. Now, you'll see that the most prosperous buildings we built are honestly our logging camps. So if you look at it, it probably we're just building more logging camps. These plantations are okay, but they're not particularly profitable themselves and um if you are afraid of falling this much in debt by all means don't build as many the two construction sectors i did and just sit back at the lower construction level if i were to swap back i'd save almost 8k so between that and reforming our tax law you'd be making money but the reality is as bad as this looks 
this is kind of the only way to get your economy rolling and it's just painful you just have to sit and watch as you lose money but your economy slowly improves you may have to go bankrupt to Portugal. bankruptcy hurts but hey you'll still be more profitable than if you didn't go through the bankruptcy it's kind of a weird thing um it's unfortunately just the reality is Portugal is just poor. There's really little, um, really little reason to play Portugal right now. It can can't even really support its starting lands, let alone anything else. Um, I mean, obviously there is stuff we can do here. We could raise taxes, that would help. We can pause our construction. We can get out of this debt. I mean, it's not like we're doomed. Technically, we could even throw in another consumption tax, just like that. We're technically making money. It's not helping us at the moment, but uh, it would allow us to pay down the interest and build up, get tech, you know, redo stuff. There are ways out of a lot of situations, so don't don't be as terrified. For example, if we added in coal, we'd make more money from that. So be aware, though, that there is a huge import shortage of silk in the British Empire pretty early on because they're at war with China. So... That's why I didn't want you to swap to Silk. Silk alone can kill you. And to some degree, that's Portugal. It's definitely not an easy nation to play. It's honestly quite a pain. If you're going to do what I just did, make sure that you put on consumption taxes, you improve your taxation law, and then you just kind of deal with the pain for a while because it, it hurts. Sticking on wooden buildings is the safer move. But, as you can see, the construction speed is is pathetic. Um, logging camps are the fastest for you to build, so build those first, then work on the other stuff. It's just kind of how it goes. They're more successful. Hopefully you pass the tax law. Uh, if you tax pass the tax law, you can definitely be making money and um, probably even think about staying on iron frame. If you don't, stay on wood, work from there. If you don't join British, you have to pass the income laws. You have to stay on wooden construction. You have to build your iron mine. You have to build your tools. Um, joining another sphere of trade is definitely the way to go as Portugal. If you can, just be aware it's going to take you a long time to rebuild. I didn't. I didn't really start to boom until like 1860 or so. At which point I was really colonizing in Africa. That's where a lot of my wealth came from in general. And as remember, as you slowly integrate stuff, you do get more money from them slowly. So land out here, although it's not great, it's still not entirely useless as you start to incorporate it. So anyway, that's it for the Portugal guide. I don't want to spend you know another hour or so trying to show you the profitable Portugal's economy. In my other game, I'm at the end game, so it wouldn't help. But um, yeah, that's Portugal. Joining the British sphere, definitely a safer way to go. Keep an eye on your money, though. You're going to have to pass more laws, consumption taxes, stuff like that. If you go it alone, it's a lot harder. You're going to grow slower, but you don't have to be worried about being part of the British sphere of influence. Your choice, British sphere, I think, is the better growth path. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching. If you liked it, like, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you in another guide or video. Bye for now.